yeah so coming to uh, art of answer writing here uh, i'll be discussing about what is the first principle of answer writing uh, then what is the difference between the structure of an answer uh, uh, presentation of an answer right and the keywords that is given at the end of the answer does it scope the uh, does it change the scope of the answer writing itself does it change the structure of the answer writing itself right and different st and, and topper says like we have to apply different strategies for different for example different papers for example society if a question comes in society the way i write my answer would be different from the same question being asked in economics that is gs3 paper so is it true how many of you believe that it is the right method raise your hand okay different strategies for different subject right so we will see all that in the next coming slides so the before going to the first principle of answer writing these two things which i have to stress here is organization of thoughts and interlinking of topics becomes very very important coming to the organization of thoughts i have represented this in a graph graphical manner on the uh, y axis we have indian population in the second graph on the y axis we have knowledge on the x axis we have time in the first graph again the time in the second graph if you compare uh, both the uh, uh, what do you say the uh, parag i mean uh, charts here what's happening here is with the increase in time the indian population is also increasing right or it has increased so th these are the issues that india is facing poverty malnutrition um, unemployment crime all that so with the increase in population the attributes like poverty malnutrition unemployment is also increasing or i can say that the followers of indian increase in indian population are resulting in poverty increase in poverty malnutrition unemployment we are not able to effectively find the solution for all of this solely because of the increase in population right we are not able to find an effective solution because of increase in population so if i have to uh, relate that first uh, graph with the second one the same thing is going with the aspirants you start off over time be it first attempt second attempt third attempt right you are the knowledge base is always increasing right just like the population in the first graph the knowledge base is always increasing but what's happening is because of the increase in knowledge the issues that you have with related to organizing the content revising it all that it is going a wire right there is uh, no appazardly written notes no revision unorganized content this is also increasing so we have in pubard we have a uh, line which says too much of information drives out good information so this is this is what is actually happening with aspirants here with too much of content uh, it is becoming more unorganized right it, it revision is not possible at all so that is the reason we have come up with this uh, concept called as babapedia and this is the solution for making it organized so that is the other reason also we have made we have inculcated in the tlp connect program the baba pd of it so we will be taking care of the current affairs part making it organized all that your effort would be in writing the answers getting it evaluated and uh, writing better answers and getting more marks clear next slide yeah before that okay coming to interlinking of uh, topics see this this can happen only when you take the entire gs as one we have four papers gs1 gs2 gs3 and gs4 always you should consider entire four papers as one so it is under one general studies paper we have sub topics known as gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 once you do that it becomes very easy to interlink between gs1 to gs4 gs4 to 2 2 to 3 for example let's take gandhi ji mahatma gandhi i'll give you one minute time you can work out saying that how you can bring mahatma gandhi in paper 1 paper 2 paper 3 paper 4 i'll give you one minute time you can uh, just write it down and let me know mahatma gandhi you, how you can bring mahatma gandhi in paper 1 which part of the syllabus paper 2 paper 3 and paper 4 please take it seriously and uh, 
work on that. You're done. So let's take Bharma Gandhi in paper. First thing is history. So I divide GS1 into three parts. History, geography and society. So in history, obviously in Indian national movement, right, nationalism, all that, complete Indian national movement, right, or anti-imperialism, all that you can add. Uh, coming to geography, can you bring uh, Mahatma Gandhi in geography part? Yeah? Human geography and how? Oh. Okay, self-sustaining villages. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. Champaran movement, uh, probably farmers, then. Okay. No, that I can put it under geography itself, oneness of the nation, spirit of nationalism. Okay, coming to the society part. Yeah. Sarvodai. Yeah. Trusteeship model in society. See, that is the reason. Please listen it listen carefully in society probably I can bring trusteeship model in GS3 economics so you need to be specific on that so for that you should have a lot of clarity in what you're reading right for society I can outrightly say women empowerment social empowerment right and there's this article 46 what does it say promoting the educational and economic interests of weaker section and we have that keyword weaker section in the society part of GS paper right so it says uh, uh, promoting the interests, economic and educational interests of weaker section, especially SCST, and also making sure that there is no injustice done to them. That is what Article 46 says. Then, in the DPSP itself, it talks about uh, cow slaughter, uh, all that. So I can bring Gandhiji there in the society part, right? If I go to GS2, where can I bring Mahatma Gandhi? Yeah? Be specific, yeah. Local governance is one. Article 40, right? Article 40 talks about organizing village panchayats. So if that was the clue from where the government picked up uh, the local PRIs, all that. Then? See, the constitutional philosophy itself, right? Constitutional philosophy itself, right, was borrowed from Gandhiji's ideals. Then? Entire DPSP, right? Entire DPSP, DPSP itself is on, is from Gandhiji. We have a separate section, right? It is divided into three sections. One is liberal principles, Gandhian principles itself, right? And social principles, right? DPSP itself. Then, see again, all that constitutional philosophy. When I say constitutional philosophy, everything gets included there. Then, Probably I'll put him, if poverty then I'll put him in, uh, I, of course it is both in GS2 and 3 but more specific it is to GS3. Terms like unemployment, poverty, right, all that comes under GS3. So that is the reason reading the syllabus, having a lot of clarity in the syllabus, right, it is very, very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is there but more specifically I'm talking about, like I can put him under GS3 since the terms poverty, unemployment, all that come under G, uh, GS3. Then? Uh, now coming to IR part. So I, I divide again GS2 into three parts. That is the constitution part, governance part and IR. So in IR can I bring Gandhiji? Yeah? International peace, yeah, right? Yeah? 
even non alignment movement so basically any foreign policy especially during the nehru's time was almost influenced by gandhi ji's ideals right so coming to the gs3 part so again i divide gs3 into three parts so it is first part is economics second part is science and tech environment third part is internal security so how can i bring gandhi ji in economics yeah somebody had earlier mentioned the trusteeship model can come there uh, under dpsp there is a one of the provisions which talks about cottage industries so i can bring cottage industries employment related things again gandhi ji there yeah workers laborers problems industrialization how okay see let us be very specific or else what 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 will happen is i can bring gandhi ji in every keyword of the syllabus right so uh, let us be uh, let us make sure that it is concrete and very touching like for example uh, cottage industries it is directly given in under gandhian principles i can put it under gs3 dpsp is i mean gandhian principles in gs2 so uh, we need to be very concrete right so th these are the areas and ethics almost everywhere you can use gandhian philosophies codes all right from attitude to philosophy everything for that matter aptitude attitude emotional intelligence all that right so th this is how you should study when you uh, take gs paper you should always consider it as one paper and it has four sub topics gs1 gs2 gs3 gs gs4 only then you can relate from one paper to another paper you can relate and you can write a lot of dimensions you can bring in a lot of dimensions in your answers right and the other thing that is important before answer writing is you need to expand the scope of the syllabus for example uh, there is a topic in gs1 which says impact of globalization on indian society so what is the scope of this keyword see upsc is very smart they have just listed down the keywords there but it is your job to go one step further expand the scope fine so if that is the topic uh, impact of globalization on indian society so what is the scope of that syllabus topic sorry yeah so whenever it is indian society upsc as a uh, knack of asking questions from vulnerable sections of indian society so i i list saying indian society i'll make a mind map saying one section would be women children elderly people physically handicapped tribal people so this is how i list in fact consecutively directly the question comes in 2016 there was a question on impact of globalization on indian women the next year it was uh, impact of globalization on elderly people then it was impact of globalization on middle class right they also form a larger chunk in our indian population right so this is how questions are asked so that is the reason your first principle should be to decode the syllabus properly expand the scope or let me take uh, salient features of indian society what is the scope what are the basically when i said scope it is like what are the topics that you need to study yeah good yeah good so joint families uh, marriage as an institution caste system so these are something that is very unique to indian society so first and first foremost thing that you have to do is expand the syllabus decode the syllabus right after that comes answer writing right so what is the first principle of answer writing identifying the keywords okay yeah yeah structuring no that comes later if you have the content you will write it no matter what you know, come again come again yeah basically it is you should understand the demand of the question and always answer the demand of the question clear that is the first principle of answer writing always answer to the demand of the question what you know would be different from what is asked in the exam so that is the reason people come out after main saying that i've completed all the 20 questions this time i'll get a rank but once they come out even they wouldn't have got an interview call as well 
right? Because what you know is totally different from what is being asked in the exam. For that, I have three examples here. For example, let us take this first topic, which say the question is on bring out the contrasting, uh, bring out the contrast in Indian society. And there's one more question which says bring out the diversity of Indian society. Is it the same? One and the same? Yeah? Is it one and the same? What is the difference here? Yeah, basically the word contrast means bring out the difference and the word diversity means the variations within the same thing. Right? That is the meaning of the word diversity and contrast. So in contrast I would be writing probably uh, in Hindu uh, religion we, uh, we consider Lord, uh, I mean the Goddess to be the supreme. But at the same time the other end what, what the women are being subjected to right atrocities domestic violence so this is the contrast that we are having we say some sections say we are the most liberal of the lot but at the same time they don't allow their own daughter or uh, daughter-in-law to wear jeans or go out in the night all that right and in some places for example uh, they they, they uh, pray or uh, they idolize ravan lord uh, ravan and some places it is ram Right, for example, Gond tribes itself, they idolize Ravan. They consider him to be the god. But at this other places, they burn effigies of Ravan. Right, so this is the contrast that you have to give with live examples. Only when you make it, uh, when you give examples, when you relate it to the day-to-day -day happenings, that makes your answer more meaningful. Am I clear? So diversity. Diversity is a very simple question. Like bring out the diversity in terms of language, food habits, right the dressing sense all that right comes under diversity the second part second example ethical governance see all these are picked up from the recent test series itself that we had so mo th these are like most common mistakes that a student does so on basis of that itself we have come up with this uh, ppt fine so ethical governance versus good governance so when the question is on ethical governance most of the students are writing on good governance. So, what is the difference here between ethical governance and good governance? What? Give me an example. That would be better. Yeah? Use of father is what? It, is it ethical governance? I'll give you an example, CSR. Is CSR a good governance or more of an ethical governance? Corporate social responsibility. That is more of ethical governance, right? For example, if I say good governance, governance is like, if I uh, simplify it, allocation of resources is governance. If I want to make that allocation efficient, transparent, accountable, that becomes good governance, right? When I associate values, Right, ethical values like uh, uh, empathy, compassion, right, all that then it becomes ethical governance. So that is the difference between governance, good governance and ethical governance. So you, there should be a lot of clarity. So when you say CSR, I can bring it under ethical governance here. Clear? For example, it can be a good governance when say suppose a project is there and allocation of resources, instead of giving it to some other private player, it is given to uh, Ambani itself. So obviously he's efficient, but in what manner is he given? Like is, was there a transparent bidding, right, where all uh, the stakeholders involved or was it only the group of Ambani company, right, so all that matters. So that is the difference between governance, good governance and ethical governance. You can be efficient, but you can be unethical also. Am I clear? Clear? The last person there. And yeah, this was one of the questions asked again. The GST Council is a shining example of institutionalized cooperative federalism comment. So as I said, the first principle of answer writing is keywords. Identify the keywords, understand the demand here. And here, here, the, the keyword here is GST Council and 
cooperative federalism here right so what i like they started off in the right note uh, mentioning about one not first constitutional amendment act or 269a which provides for gst council that will be your introduction that is fine but in the body they went on to say how uh, how it is helping the uh, government in generating more revenue right how it is helping uh, the uh, end consumers also in uh, dismantling the cascading effect of tax all that so but actually the question is demanding how is it is a shining example of cooperative federalism so the points here should have been what the composition of gst council first of all where both the central government finance minister and the, all the state finance minister get in and take a call right which impacts the entire country then how the decisions are taken right three fourth given to the uh, state governments one fourth to the center so those are the things that should actually come in your answer is it clear so th this is the essence of answer writing first always ans understand the demand of the question that is the first principle of answer writing fine coming to the structure part fine so there is a difference between a structuring of the answer and presentation of the answer so when i any question can be divided in, uh, divided into three parts that is introduction body and conclusion so coming to introduction there are four to five different ways of introducing an answer fine one is definition where do you use definition yeah see whenever there's a technical word for example let us take in gs2 citizens charter you need to define what citizens charter is let's take in gs3 artificial intelligence you need to define what is artificial intelligence or uh, fiscal consolidation you need to define what is fiscal consolidation right so that thing there should, there should be a lot of clarity in that so technical words are given you need to what is like say in gs1 geography temperature inversion you need to define what is temperature inversion so that is how you introduce an answer one part is defining it through definition second is why is it in news examples when can you use why is it in news or current affairs part see anything that is in for example right to privacy so you can say recently there was a verdict in case putta swami case you need to mention the case name only then you'll get marks so in the recent verdict of case putta swami case right to privacy was made a fundamental right or uh, navtej singh johar case that is related to lgbt communities decriminalization of same sex marriages so recently in that verdict this was the call taken so whenever it is related to current affairs part you can start off with why was it in news this is the second way of uh, introducing your answer third data where do you use data especially in gs3 right you cannot say india is growing at a very good rate it doesn't make any sense unless and until you write india is growing at a rate of 4% 6% 7% only then it will add value or else it will become very general statements when you mention general statements you get general marks itself right so or another example i can give you is uh, demographic dividend so if the question is on demographic dividend I'll, i would start off my answer saying 50% uh, of indian population is below 25 years right or 60% is 60 or 80% 60% is below 35 years so that tells me the criticality of demographic dividend in indian context so that is how it is like you should hit the bull's eye that is how introduction should be written they shouldn't be like beating around the bush writing stories there it's just a 10 marker you have only 20 to 30 words for the introduction 20 to 30 or 30 to 40 words for the conclusion the remaining 200 words is for the body that is how an answer should be written clear or to bring out the criticality of government schemes for example um, open defecation i can start off my answer saying 40 percent of india defecates in open so that is the reason we had swachh bharat abhiyan so that tells the criticality of swachh bharat abhiyan scheme or if i want to talk about financial inclusion and the question is on jandan uh, jandan yojana so i can say 40 percent of indians do not have access to bank accounts so that tells me the criticality of jandan yojana right so this is how answer should be written so that is the what third or fourth way right first was definition 
second was why was it in use third is data then see that again comes under data itself i would classify for example if there's a question on poverty i i can even start off with global hunger index so that all that comes under data itself any other way yeah yeah quotes quotes is the fourth way for example the example the question is on sustainable development so i would start off with gandhi ji's quote which says the world has enough for everybody's need but not for everybody's greed that tells me the criticality of sustainable de development so what i'm trying to say here is you put a quote you put a fact it should hit the bulls eye you don't have to write stories that two lines is enough for me even one line with that fact is enough for me clear and the fifth way is giving a historical background or probably bringing the significance of that issue for example uapa amendment right you can bring in the significance of that in the your introduction itself right or anti defection bill you can bring in the significance of that in the introduction itself so these are the five different ways of introducing an answer is it clear any doubts am i clear right so these are the five different ways of introducing an answer body is basically it will be in line with the demand of the question directly so directly you mention the keywords uh, you put a subheading and you start writing and it will be like one is one way is a 360 degree view of the answer so considering all the subjects that you have read polity history economic geography in that dimension you bring in more dimensions in that line or in terms of stakeholders who are the stakeholders involved farm farmer state government Uh, central government so that can be and consumers so it the answer can be written that can flow in either stakeholders point of view or in terms of the subjects that we have so this is called the 360 degree analysis of any answer clear coming to conclusion what are the different ways of concluding an answer futuristic as a bureaucrat you should be solution oriented see basically the qualities of a bureaucrat are reflected in your answers here right so a bureaucrat is one who is analytical analyzes the issue and comes out with a solution so always the way this conclusion should be positive way i mean futuristic right that is one way giving your balanced opinion right your summary of the issue discussed that is the second way of concluding then again you can conclude it with a quote that is also the third way of concluding then you can bring in best practices in pubad we call it as comparative public administration bring in the best practices and conclude the answer for example if the question is on solid waste management right if the question is on solid waste management i can i can bring the system that is followed in germany which is called green dot system so what happens there is for every plastic that you put for example you order something on amazon or flipkart it is packed three four layers of plastics are put right so what they do did in germany is so for every plastic put there was a green dot on placed on that so you put five plastics there are five green dots and the fine for each green dot would be say let's take an hypothetical example 100 rupees so it is like the producer has to pay 500 rupees for every plastic i mean the plastics that he has put for that particular packing that particular product so the term there was used was producer pays responsibility in fact the same thing is inculcated in the recent laws that we have e waste laws or solid waste management laws talks about producer pays responsibility so i can say we, we can follow something on the lines of green dot system so that is the fourth way of concluding an answer clear so these are different ways on how you can conclude an answer you can give a way forward suggestion a committee you can say that is the fifth way come suggestion through a committee according to arc2 these are the reforms that should be implemented according to punji commission report these are the reforms that should be implemented right this is these are five different ways of concluding an answer so this this goes with structuring an answer am i clear am i clear coming to presentation of an answer right is there a difference between structuring and presentation of an answer hmm so you can see that in the next slide see this is one of my students answers it is very neatly presented what do i mean by presentation is coming up with a subheading right underlining the keywords showing to the examiner that you have written a you have mentioned a report or you have mentioned a case study or you have given an example right spacing between 
between the para and inter para and inter para inter para and intra para that should also be taken into consideration for example what do i mean by that is within that first para the spacing between the lines right that should be lesser than the spacing between one para to the other para right that matters a lot even though if your answer and writing is not neat if you are if you can work on the presentation part it does a lot of good for you see basically presentation why because you will make the life of the examiner easier so that he can read skim through it because he has only 15 20 minutes to evaluate an entire copy right you make his life easier he'll make your life easier by awarding you more marks right so this is uh, with respect to presentation so he has mentioned the question is on uh, what are the imped impediments of e governance in india how can those be addressed so there are two subheadings here right so first i write an introduction uh, talking about e governance the importance of it right then the impediments in e governance that is the subheading then i write the macro word and underline it so it is like basically when i look at the uh, e governance part the impediments would be infrastructure digital divide knowledge and awareness so these are the keywords so i mentioned that and just mentioning that won't fetch me marks i need to substantiate with a fact or an example so in the first one he has said lack of infrastructure broadband connectivity is still in phase 2 of bharat which is equal into 50% of gram panchayats connected or digital divide urban internet penetration is only 80% while as rural penetration is just 40% so that tells me the criticality of the issue so just mentioning digital divide doesn't fetch me marks fine but when i support that with the relevant fact there is a huge divide right how huge the divide is that you can uh, that that can be reflected only through the facts that is mentioned here am i clear so uh, then again i go to the next subheading because it talks about how can those be addressed so i write, i write what needs to be done and i mention from the government side what can be done from the other dimensions what can be done so this is a perfect presentation of an answer next slide so i can give you see though here this the second and the third slide it is not perfectly presented though the handwriting here looks very neat right but it is not presented because uh, there is no demarcation what is the subheading right what are the keywords whether that person has mentioned an example or he has given a quote nothing is clear here so there is a lot of difference from this one to the first slide right go to the next slide and see this this is very appositely written when you write start of paragraph also there should be a space left right and a paragraph should be three to four lines only and that paragraph should convey me a point but see how appositely this point i mean this answer is written clear so this is with respect to presentation presentation matters a lot basically here you are like a salesman trying to sell your answer how you sell your answer you should tell the examiner that see i have read i have read this un report right i have read this uh, global hunger index or i have read uh, a report from arc2 or i am mentioning an example here right you should show off your knowledge there only then you will be able to fetch more marks clear am i clear so this is with respect to presentation yeah coming to the keywords at the end of the question so there is lot of discussions in this part do you actually believe that every keyword would make your uh, structure of the answer or scope of the answer different or is it like every keyword you give me i write the play five positives or four positives and four negatives for every issue yeah yeah the other thing is the keyword given also right it depends on the nature of the question directly you cannot make a statement and say examine directly you cannot put a statement and write comment it doesn't make any sense for that matter the what do you think among the four questions i mean four keywords discuss analyze comment and examine what do you think is a perfect question here on the lines of upsc because even upsc asks it depends on the nature of the question they give the particular keyword what has happened in the market is you you read uh, read something in a newspaper take that quote and directly say comment without even knowing what the question is what is the nature of that question right so it doesn't make any sense if you actually go through the uh, previous year upsc papers a lot of thought is also put into it giving the keyword in which question can i ask them to discuss in which question can i ask them to analyze in which question can i ask them to comment 
right so that is more important so among the four keywords which keyword do you think for this particular statement would go well yeah citizens charter helps in empowering citizens is there any negativity in the answer question is there any negativity so then what can be the keyword here yeah see the more closely uh, selected keyword here would be discuss how citizen charter empowers people or it can be citizen charter empowers citizens analyze this can be the most suitable keywords that can be used here what do you mean by examine you bring in the pros and cons of an issue three pros three cons four pros four cons that is the meaning of the word keyword examine comment what is the meaning of the word comment see comment is again like you need to give your views opinions again you can bring in the pros and cons and give your stand right your observation that is the meaning of the word comment discuss basically you, there's a thread that starts from citizen charter to how it empowers empowers people so that thread you need to follow how is it making it making an informed citizen how that informed citizen is being empowered so those are the things that you need to discuss for example i can break it down into simpler parts or two three parts in the word analyze here so first statement would be uh, mentioning the services that is available in the bank for example you have an access to the insurance there right some insurance service then you have ssy sukanya samruddhi yojana so there will there's a list of services given under the bank i mean the the citizen charter tells you you can avail a savings account you can go for a current account you can avail the insurance services here right so these are the list of services mentioned so what is it doing with that when you mention the list of services what is happening there it is making the citizen informed right an informed citizen is one the, the next stage is nothing but empowering him through information right so then is then there is this e mitras e bank mitras or bank mitras where they come and explain you how to fill a chalan right it, not everybody knows how to fill a chalan draw a check there will be old people there will be uneducated people so you have there in a uh, video where it will be teaching you how to fill a chalan all that so it is assisting you so in that way also it is empowering the citizen there right and you grievance redressal right you have an app there you have a uh, box there where feedback box where you can write and put the issues right so th this are the step you need to discuss it this way you need to analyze the issue in this way so every every statement that i have made i am giving an example and i am saying how it is empowering the citizen how it is uh, making the citizen more informed right so this is how an answer should be written clear yeah then enumerate substantiate it is all very easy enumerate there is nothing analysis nothing much of analysis here enumerate the provisions of child labor act directly list on the provisions of that substantiate justify all that means you need to support that statement but you can keep one para where you can say the other way around the negatives of that statement right explain is very simple you need to describe it fine so now yeah this i'll explain it later so let's take this uh, a live demo of the next yeah so this is the question for you what are the essential components of sustainable urban development explain so this is a 15 marker i'll give you 8 to 10 minutes you all of you need to write the answers even i can evaluate one two copies and we'll discuss what should be the right answer here yeah pre that is synopsis we'll give it later so i'll we'll start i'll re i'll re i'll read the question what are the essential components of sustainable urban development explain a very simple question and this question forms a part of general studies paper 1 society
of sustainable urban development. Uh, can anybody give me two, three copies? I can just even evaluate here itself. Uh, what's your name? Anuj. This is both. The one in green. What about this? Whose is this? Yours. So, what are the essential components of uh, sustainable urban development? Explain. So he writes, Government of India started various programs for urban development, example, uh, Smart City Program, Amrut, etc. Various components of sustainable develop, urban development, energy pollution, uh, healthy food infrastructure. See, this answer is not organized for me. And in the introduction, you could have simply started off with what? The definition of our sustainable urban development. So, what is the definition of sustainable urban development? Yeah? Making sure that you are fulfilling the needs of the present population, urban population, without compromising the needs of the future generation. So, that should have been, I mean, there are different ways again, but that can be a simple definition to start off. Right, but this uh, this is more about mentioning the schemes. Instead of that, that would have fetched you one mark there, right? And various components of sustainable is put a subheading, right? Uh, then yes, up like it is energy, pollution, healthy food, infrastructure. The points are fine, but uh, it is not organized, right? And it asks you to explain as well, right? So probably for this question, I would give him one conclusion challenges. Where is the conclusion? See, this is just to explain. You don't have to mention the challenges and all. So this is out of the scope of the demand of the exam. So you won't get any marks for writing the challenges here. But so probably two on ten. Fine. Highest for any ten marker is six. Fine. Five and a half to six, and for a fifteen marker, it would be eight. Max is seven point five to eight. That is how the markings are done. So here it is 2 on 10, so the highest is 6. So here it, I would award him probably 2 on 10. Then there is one more person, what's your name? Vikas. Uh, the definition is big, I mean the introduction is just a 10 marker. You have to just use 20 to 30 words and complete the introduction. So he says sustainable urban development is the need of the art in the light of the beginning. So it is not an essay. As I said, you have to hit the bullseye with the proper definition or quote and you can just go into the body. That is where you will fetch more marks here. Clear? So he is saying that it is the need of our honor cities, many cities, wheels are cre creaking far. Want. You see, it is not a journalism. Uh, you are writing something for the paper, right? Not for any newspaper. So. Uh, I might be critical here, but uh, the uh, probably writing the definition or a quote probably we would have faced two marks. Components, proper slum management, use of technology, constructing satellite cities. Yeah, the points are relevant, but uh, again not uh, properly presented with subheadings. Uh, subheadings are also there, but uh, probably under society, right? I will come to that. So, I have what marks I would be giving? There is no conclusion as well. And you have just written 3 4 points. Again, probably again 2 on 10 for this. 2 to 2.5 on 10 for this. I think 3 answers. Yeah? Which? No, no, there is one more. I will evaluate it later after the session, after the workshop. What are the essential components? Urban areas are the backbone of 
any growing economy as of 2015 52% of world population lives in urban areas sustainability is the key overall this is still fine intro is fine probably one mark for that Apazard urban development does more bad than good see again this word uh, the sentence that he has mentioned Apazard urban development does more bad than good is it giving me any point that is specific to the question there this doesn't fetch me any marks there it is just a general statement passing statement which doesn't fetch me any marks sustainability can be accounted instead of that you could have written the subheading saying the components of sustainable urban development and you could have come up with different dimensions the dimension here he mentions political in spite of me telling that this is a part of gs1 society what should have been the first component yeah and he has mentioned political and uh, just listing down the points the question asks you to explain here right so this is just listing down the points empowered and transparent local bodies just the keywords mentioning keywords won't fetch you marks clear so probably for this again two two and a half two and a half on ten fine whose copy is this yeah So basically uh, here, what are the essential components of sustainable urban development? So I can divide it into three major parts. That is the society part, uh, the uh, economics part, the society, environment and economics. So I would be starting off with society. In society, in terms of society, the keyword here is how can you, like the accessibility of resources that will make the urban development sustainable. That is the keyword. Coming to the environment part, protecting and preserving the ecosystem is the keyword there coming to the environment part sorry uh, the uh, economics part balanced urban growth that is the keyword there but when i start writing my answer uh, probably all of you have got the synopsis the model answer yeah so first i would put the key uh, subheading known as essential essential components of sustainable urban development that is the subheading that I would write after the introduction subheading under subheading I'll write one more subheading known as society there I'll write three components one is quality of life right when I say quality of life because that is an essential component for sustainable urban development so what do I mean by quality of life here in terms of in terms of what quality of life yeah education health sanitation right all that contributes to sustainable urban development not only that recreation parks right uh, what else then cleanliness awareness that is separation yeah uh, cleanliness awareness that is separation of Yeah, cleanliness awareness that is separation of waste. So all this actually contributes to, to the betterment of the society in terms of quality of life. Then second point is access to resources. The resources should be accessible without any discrimination between the high class or the low class. Right? And third point is harmony and safe cities. So that is also very essential. The development can happen or it can sustain only when there is peace in the society only when there is harmony among different communities and you also need a safe society right you cannot like if, if there is crime happening on women right every day or the other or every week like it will not make the urban sector sustainable obviously people will stop going to that city itself so th this is from the society point of view uh, quality of life access to resources harmony or the safe cities concept so this is in particular with respect to gs1 society right so first, first thing is i have to list down the societal points then what is more linked to society is the environment part right so environment part would be again water management so it is more about what uh, what do you say water harvesting right uh, conserving of water uh, water recycling right to uh, to 
ensure that there is a sustainable water availability for the city then again green cover to reduce the urban heat right and also to for for the air quality to be better right so that is with respect to green cover then in terms of reducing the per capita em emission for that i can use urban mobility that is mass transportation so i can use the word keyword here urban mobility and uh, the examples would be e cars uh, mass transportation car pooling right or even i can use technology right technology and reduce the carbon emission that is nothing but e cars here or following better standards of uh, bs4 or bs6 norms right so that is also a point that is a major component related to sustainable urban development then renewable usage of renewable re resources of course that is also that also constitutes to sustainable urban development right coming to the economy part making the urban sector self sufficient right in, if i talk if i have to give an example probably in terms of raising the resources right i can come up with urban local bonds and i can raise resource for myself and also in how efficiently you are used, utilizing the resources be it land uh, minerals wealth how efficiently you are utilizing the resources without exploiting it right and also job creation because for a sustained growth you need labor intensive jobs to be created that will also as well lead to sustainable economic growth fine then infrastructure so it, it is environment friendly like green buildings which there is a less use, usage of resources right or efficient usage of resources through green, green buildings so that is in line with infrastructure right coming to the polity part or governance part is nothing but the participative nature of the citizens in bangalore we have this ngo called janagraha wherein the civil i mean the citizens are involved to bring a major change in quality of life so any issues with respect to civil amenities they directly go and approach the government and get make sure that it is also implemented or get it done i can also include a geography dimension here like like one of uh, you had well, like one of the student here had mentioned about satellite towns right how to control the spillover effect for example around delhi we have ghaziabad uh, faridabad noida right uh, then gurgaon so that you provide basic amenities in this city so that th the main center will not get core crowded so you develop this what sustainable model through satellite towns right or you can even follow this what is being done in chandigarh where it is a cluster based approach right you have all the uh, restaurants together you have all the malls together or you have all the schools together all the residential areas together so in fact that is also being next followed in amravati so that is how it should be done so you can inculcate that but again it depends on the uh, demand of the question and where it is placed whether it is coming in the geography so if it is in geography part probably you have to give some importance to geography and then the society that is how it should go on clear so in 200 words you can bring in the relevant dimensions it need not see this is a perfect example so it need not be like you have to write all the dimension that is mentioned here at least the economic society dimension economic dimension and the participative nature of that uh the citizens these are very important dimensions and environment these are the three dimensions that has to be mentioned how would you conclude this answer futuristic part somebody had put that in the introduction saying by 2030 40% of indian population will be in urban areas so that is the reason there is a need for urban growth in a sustainable manner and you can mention certain schemes like uh, smart cities uh amrut all this are in the direction to direction for sustainable development so that is how you can conclude the answer so this is a perfect answer fine so it is not like you you can think of all the points in those those 10 minutes and put it down but as i said majorly the economic uh, the society part environment part and economic part is very very important so the, all that leads to sustainable urban development these are the basically these are the components of sustainable urban development am i clear clear yes, any doubts so when do you use way forward? see way forward and uh, conclusion is one and the same there is nothing like there is a difference between way forward and conclusion see way forward if i have to put it in a different word it would be uh, suggestion futuristic so that is what you will be writing in the conclusion yeah 
you don't have to write that word see here just to make you understand that this is a conclusion i have written the word keyword conclusion there or introduction there you have to write as i showed it in that presentation part somebody had written an int uh, introduction followed by a subheading right directly you don't have to write this is the body this is the introduction this is the conclusion that keyword is not, need not be mentioned directly you can put that as conclusion itself instead of mentioning the word way forward at conclusion you can uh, dedicate one para for that that uh, automatically becomes a conclusion See, examine as I said, you have to bring in the pros and cons, cons of it directly. These are the three positive thing about that issue, three negatives of the issue. And analyze, as I said, I've given you example. You need to again. It is also about the positives and negatives, but you have to give more examples, substantiate. You cannot just jot down points there. You need to give an analytical perspective, explain that point. Yeah. How many times See, there's nothing, there's no hard and fast rule that you have to, but in general, five to six points. Not five pros and five cons. If that is the case, you have to write three pros and three cons or three to four. See, it depends. You, you try practicing it in seven minutes, how fast you can write all that. Anything else? What? Why? Why should we have? The, the, the question doesn't demand that. It directly says what are the essential components of urban, uh, sustainable urban development. So that uh, thought itself shouldn't come. It basically it is asking you what are the attributes of sustainable urban development. So from society, what are the attributes, quality of life, life accessibility, resources, all that. From economic, so that is how it should be written. Why is not required? See, as I said, it's a, in a 10 marker, you should hit the bullseye. Every point should get you a mark. That is how it should be written. It's not an essay where you bring in so many other dimensions. As I said, answer writing, the first principle should always be answer the demand of the question for that you have to read the question two to three times at least fine see it's a 10 marker that's what i've been telling you see the way you write an essay is different you don't have to have a connecting paragraph from the introduction to the body that is not what UPSC is looking at. More the dimensions, when you answer GS123, it has to be more of objective nature. You write an introduction, it is not like you have to have a connecting word or one more transitional para and then, then you come up to the actual body. You don't have time there. You have to get more points, more dimensions basically. Society is one dimension, economics is one dimension, environment is one dimension. Then there are sub-dimensions there. So more the dimensions, more the marks. You see, there were days where, I think 2010, 11 times where 60 marker questions were asked. So when it is a 60 marker or 25 marker, probably there you have, there you will have scope to write an introduction, a connecting para, a transition and move, move to the flow. But here, the essay, they would be checking the flow, but not in uh, the GS123, especially when it's a 10 marker, 15 marker. Yeah? Yeah. There's nothing. See, it is like, for example, probably in the introduction you have two lines, conclusion two, three lines. In a 15 marker, you can extend it to one more line. Three lines, three to four lines intro, three to four lines conclusion. The, the structure remains the same. Fine. Bring in more, the funda, the bottom line is bring in more dimension, you will get more marks. Right, when I say dimension, it is not points. So, as in this answer, society is one dimension. In that, there are sub dimensions. Economics is one dimension, sub dimensions. Polity is one dimension, sub dimensions. Yeah? See, it depends on the place of the question. As I said, it is, since it is in society, I have put the societal points first. If the same question was asked in GS3, I would have started with the economic points first. 
clear so that is how i'll change that is the reason i i asked you whether do we have different strategies for different different paper similarly when smart cities was asked in gs1 again it was asked in gs3 on this in the same year 2016 i suppose you cannot be writing the same answer there the flow of thoughts differs and more importance should be given to that respective paper probably here i'll be giving more importance to society if it comes in gs3 i'll be giving more importance to economic dimensions and facts it depends on that yeah that doesn't make sense you need to explain it right if you just mention the names it won't fetch you marks it is not see there is this one rule which is too much is too bad so every answer having a diagram is also not good you need to mix it up fine anyway the questions i'll take it later because there's one more session by kumar vivek sir and atyab also right uh, once we wind up we can discuss more on this